Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani, and for this lesson, we will focus on the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is the boundary that separates the inside of a living cell, also called the intracellular space, from its surrounding or extracellular environment. And the main job of the plasma membrane is to control what can go in and out of the cell. Because it allows some substances to enter the cell but not others, it is described as a selectively permeable membrane. Cell membranes are made primarily of a double layer of phospholipids, with some other molecules either embedded in between the phospholipids or in their surface. Molecules like cholesterol or proteins, for example. So let's look at the different components of the plasma membrane one at a time. And let's start with the phospholipid bilayer. So recall from our lesson on phospholipids that phospholipids have at one end a polar head that is hydrophilic or water-loving. That means that it interacts well with water. At the other end, they have two nonpolar fatty acid tails that are hydrophobic or water-hating and do not interact well with water. Because of these unique properties, when placed in a liquid environment, phospholipids then tend to arrange themselves into something called a phospholipid bilayer, so that only the hydrophilic heads interact with the watery environment and the hydrophobic tails crowd inward away from the water. In three dimensions, it would look a little more like this, with the heads facing the watery exterior and interior of the cell and the hydrophobic fatty acid tails sandwiched in between the phosphate heads away from the water. Another thing that you need to know is that the membranes that surround the organelles inside the cell are also made of a phospholipid bilayer. For example, let's take a look at this vesicle. This vesicle comes from the Golgi body, and it is carrying a cell product that was produced at the endoplasmic reticulum, packaged into a vesicle there, and then sent to the Golgi body, where it was finished and repackaged into another vesicle. Now it is headed from towards the plasma membrane where it will deliver its contents to the outside of the cell by fusing with the plasma membrane. Since the membrane of the vesicle is made up of the same phospholipids that makes up the plasma membrane, it simply becomes part of the plasma membrane itself. Also, contents from outside the cell can be brought into the cell by forming vesicles from the plasma membrane. There are a number of different proteins embedded in the membrane or on its surface and they serve a variety of functions. Some are involved in the transport of substances across the membrane. Some receive chemical signals from outside the cell and then translate the chemical signals into some type of intracellular action. Also, enzymes in the membrane can do the same thing they do in the cytoplasm of a cell. They can transform a molecule into another form. And Anchor proteins can physically link intracellular structures like, say, the cytoskeleton within the cell with the membrane itself, or link the membrane with structures outside the cell. Some of the proteins have sugar chains attached to them, forming glycoproteins. Glycoproteins have a variety of functions, but mainly serve as recognition signals to other cells. So the carbohydrate or sugar chains that are attached to these proteins allow for some unique shapes, which then can act as markers that can be used for cell-to-cell -cell recognition. Like, for example, it allows cells to distinguish self from non-self, which is the basis of our immune system. The sugar chains also serve a role in cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, allowing cells to attach to other cells to form tissues. And while glycoproteins are proteins that are covalently bonded to carbohydrates, glycolipids then are lipids that are bonded to carbohydrate molecules. And cell communication and adhesion are not the only roles of glycoproteins and glycolipids. For example, glycolipids are used for electrical insulation in nerve cells. They are found in high numbers in an insulating sheath called a myelin sheath that is found surrounding a part of the nerve cell or neuron. And phospholipids are not the only lipid molecule found on the plasma membrane. Embedded throughout the plasma membrane 
is a lipid molecule called cholesterol. Cholesterol lends support to the membrane and helps regulate its fluidity. And speaking of fluidity, the current view of the plasma membrane is called the fluid mosaic model, which describes the membrane as both a fluid and a mosaic. But what do those words mean? So let's start with the word fluid. The cell membrane is fluid because the phospholipids and the proteins that are embedded between them are free to move. The components of the plasma membrane do not stay in one place. They are in constant motion. So this fluidity is due to the structure of the phospholipids and is also helped along by the presence of cholesterol molecules. And that is because the phospholipids of the plasma membrane are not static. They don't stay in place. They are in constant movement. They move rapidly and constantly past each other in a form of lateral movement and also very occasionally they flip-flop with their bilayer partners. So a factor that leads to this fluidity is the nature of the phospholipids themselves. The ratio of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids within the phospholipids helps determine the fluidity of the membrane, especially at cold temperatures. In their saturated form, the fatty acids in the phospholipid tails are relatively straight. In contrast, unsaturated fatty acids contain some double bonds, which then bends the tails. So when it is cold, the saturated fatty acids with their straight tails are compressed by decreasing temperatures. They press in on each other, making a dense and fairly rigid membrane. But when unsaturated fatty acids are compressed, the kinks in their tails sort of push or elbow adjacent phospholipid molecules away from each other, maintaining some space between the phospholipid molecules. And this elbow room helps to maintain the fluidity in the membrane at lower temperatures. So the composition of the phospholipid bilayer is particularly important in a cold environment. A cold environment tends to compress membranes composed largely of saturated fatty acids, making them less fluid and more susceptible to rupturing. Many organisms, like fish for example, can adapt to cold temperatures by changing the proportion of unsaturated fatty acids in their membranes in response to the lowering of the temperature. In other words, when it gets cold, some organisms increase the amount of unsaturated fatty acids in their membranes in order to keep their membranes fluid. In animal cells, another factor that keeps the membrane fluid is cholesterol. Molecules of cholesterol can be found embedded within the phospholipid bilayer in the membrane. The role of cholesterol is to basically dampen the effect of temperature changes in the membrane. So cholesterol acts a bit like a buffer, preventing lower temperatures from lowering the fluidity of the membrane, but also preventing higher temperatures from increasing the fluidity too much. What cholesterol does is it extends the range of temperatures in which a membrane can remain fluid and therefore functional. So at lower temperatures, cholesterol increases the space between phospholipids, which then keeps the membrane fluid. While at higher temperatures, cholesterol restrains the movement of phospholipids, reducing the fluidity of the membrane, essentially keeping it from melting. One other reason that the plasma membrane is fluid is actually due to its mosaic nature. The plasma membrane is a mosaic because it has many different types of molecules embedded throughout. And this mosaic characteristic of the membrane actually helps the plasma membrane remain fluid. The integral proteins, those that are embedded in the bilayer, exist in the membrane as separate but loosely attached molecules that are able to help keep the membrane fluid. And so the fluid mosaic model helps explain how the plasma membrane is both a fluid with components that are in constant motion and a mosaic with many different types of molecules embedded throughout. So that's it for now and I'll talk to you soon.